WJCL News, working for you. Last night, the long anticipated decision came from a grand jury in Ferguson, Missouri. The decision was made not to indict Officer Darren Wilson in the shooting death of 18 year old Michael Brown. The whole process raised the question, what does a normal grand jury process actually look like? So tonight we are working for you to explain what goes on behind the doors of a grand jury. That's right, WJCL's Chelsea McDonald is here and she explains the entire process for us. Hey Chelsea. Hey Kevin and Jennifer. A grand jury is a group of citizens, the amount varies, who will decide whether to bring criminal charges against someone. A prosecutor brings in evidence for different cases and the grand jury will sit for a period of time. It could be for 90 days to even six months. We ask people like you, what's a grand jury? Basically, when they put together a group of people to hear a case before it's actually considered whether or not the case is going to be taken to trial. But it's not that simple. So we asked a law professor, Andrew Wright, what's the goal of having a grand jury? The idea of a grand jury in part is to protect the citizens from overzealous prosecutors. Prosecuting attorneys like Robert McCullough present evidence to the grand jury. Then the jury will decide whether to return the indictment and charge the accuser or in the Ferguson case, no bill or not to indict. Famously once said that a prosecutor could indict a ham sandwich if he wanted to. And so one of the things I think is going on in Ferguson right now is skepticism about how hard the prosecutors pushed when they brought the evidence before the grand jury since there was a return of non-indictment. The vast majority of cases that are brought before grand juries return indictments. Unlike a trial, there isn't a defense counsel and a prosecutor. The prosecutor is the only person in the room presenting his or her theories. That's one of the reasons it's come under criticism that it's under the sway of the prosecutor's theories because there, there isn't a defense counsel in there who's testing the evidence in an adversarial way. But if a grand jury doesn't return an indictment, can a prosecutor try to get another? The most critical variable is how interested the prosecutor is in obtaining an indictment. The prosecutor's office, I think the allegations are, in Ferguson might not be that interested in getting an indictment. So the first choice is their office would have to be a priority that they get that indictment. So the difference between a grand jury and a trial jury is that a grand jury will show that there was probable cause that a crime was committed and, in their opinion, enough evidence to take it to trial. The trial jury will only sit for one trial and decide the facts in that case. Reporting in the studio, Chelsea McDonald, WJCL News, working for you.